the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be and abide with us all. Our text this day is the gospel lesson for this day, Luke chapter 2, verses 22 through 40, which we just uh, read for you. We look at it under the theme, A Cross in a Cradle. <clears throat> the little story uh, comes to us of, a, of somebody who wrote a letter. There was a lady who wrote a letter to God. Well, it arrived at the post office, and it went to the uh, office in the post office where they, you know, where the, you can't read the address or that it's not an address, in other words, that, that's around and so forth. So that's where the letter uh, landed because it was addressed to God. So this postal worker reads the letter. And the letter goes like this. Dear God, I'm an 83-year-old widow living on a very small pension. Yesterday, someone stole my purse. It had $100 in it, which was all the money I had until the next pension check. Next Sunday, I had invited two of my friends over for dinner. Without that money, I have nothing to buy food with. I have no family to turn to, and you're my only hope. Can you help me? Please help me. Well, the postal worker was moved by the letter. And so he talks about to the other postal workers there in the post office and so forth, and they decide to take up a collection to help this lady. And between them, they collected $96. Didn't quite make the 100 but $96. And so they put it in an envelope, and he sent it to her as a letter from God. Then she, uh, she writes a little later. Next week, she writes this letter. Dear God, how can I thank you enough for what you did for me? Because of your generosity, I was able to fix a lovely dinner for my friends. We had a very nice day, and I told my friends of your wonderful gift. And she adds, by the way, there was, there was $4 missing. It, must, it was no doubt those no good thieving people at the post office. <laughs> you see, sometimes people aren't, they give, they, if it's a little short, they're, they're disappointed and so forth, and they're blaming somebody, you know, here, the ones that really gave is the ones that, uh, that uh, she takes the task and so forth. Well, we know those things happen in our world sometimes. And people don't always see what others, others do. This day, we need to see what our Lord has done for you and for me. And how he's come to us. Today, we, we see here in our text, concerning a promise. A promise that was kept. You and I sometimes don't always keep our promises. Because one, one thing, we, we might forget. We might make a promise and and maybe the promise was to be fulfilled somewhere down the line and so forth, and we forget things. So we may forget. Sometimes in the past we may have made a promise that we didn't necessarily want to keep anyway, and we didn't do it. And so there, there, and then we may have made a promise that we couldn't fulfill. We found out it was impossible for us to fulfill it uh, at a later date and so forth. And so yes, promises are not always kept. And we realize that also by people making promises to us. Because we know that different people have made promises to us, and we know how often sometimes they've been broken. And we suspect sometimes, too, they didn't intend to keep them. And we know sometimes that salesmen make kind of promises, you know, to sell you things, and, and you see, can see through those, those promises. And sometimes, you know, politicians make promises, and they don't always fulfill all their promises. And so we can go down the line of how promises are, are not very well kept many times. What about the promises of God? Because in our text today, God has promised someone something very definite. Does God keep his promise? And in our lives, sometimes we might feel, God doesn't always keep his promise to me. I prayed to him about this, or I prayed to him about that. And he never answered me. He never fulfilled that. Well, we may have not saw his fulfillment. Maybe it was different than what we thought it should be, or what we wanted it to be, and so forth. And so we don't think God keeps his promise. And you know, Satan is always there tempting you and me too not to believe God's promises. And Satan attacked God's promises right from the beginning. In the Garden of Eden, he comes to, to, to Eve. And Eve tells him, we're not to eat the fruit of this tree. And when we eat the fruit of this tree, God tells us, we will die. The devil says, no, you're not going to die. God's not going to keep that promise. Yes, and so... Mankind fell with the sin. But God did keep his promise. God does keep his promise. And we see in our text today, God kept his promise 
also to a man named Simeon. <clears throat> Our text takes place 40 days after Jesus' birth. Because when the first male child was born, it was supposed to be the purification rites where they, the mother and father were to go to the temple to perform those. And so that happened 40 days afterwards. And so we read in your text, every firstborn male is to be consecrated to the Lord and to offer a sacrifice in keeping with what is said in the law of the Lord, a pair of doves or two young pigeons. And so the Lord moves Simeon reveals to Simeon that day that he's to go to the temple. And when he's in the temple, the Holy Spirit also leads and guides him to Mary and Joseph. And he takes the baby Jesus into his arms, it tells us in our text. Yes, he takes him into his arms and he says, Lord, now let us thou thy servant depart in peace. The promise has been fulfilled. He sees that in the Christ child here, the promise that, that God made him was truly fulfilled. So you and I, we can learn to trust the promises of God. He does fulfill them as he just fulfilled them here for Simeon. But also something else. Simeon, yes, he welcomed the Christ child and that he's now ready to depart. He's ready to leave this life because he's seen his salvation and so forth. But then he speaks to, Mary, to Joseph and Mary and he says this to Mary, a sword will pierce your own soul too. You think about that, how Mary must have thought, felt, when Simeon says to her, a sword will pierce your soul also. So in this joyous day of the purification of presenting the, the Christ child to the, to the Heavenly Father, here this man is telling Mary, a sword is going to pierce your soul in the future. <clears throat> There's a story of a maximum prison where the prisoners are putting on a Christmas play and so they're putting on the, the, whole, the Christmas story <clears throat> and they can't bring anything from outside for, for props and so forth so they have to do it from inside and so they use a mop to represent Mary and her hair and so forth and a ski mask with some cotton balls and or white socks to represent a sheep you know and a cardboard box for a manger <clears throat> and then the question was, what are they going to put in the, in the manger? In other words, they could just put a blanket in there and so forth. They couldn't bring a baby into the uh, prison and so forth. So they didn't have anything to, to do that with. But on the day they were going to present it, the chaplain goes to his office and he brings something back to them and they wrap it up in a blanket and put it there in, that, in the manger. And then when they go through their play and it's time to present the Christ child to the people, they unwrap is that what, that, what, what the, the chaplain had brought for them? They unwrap, they take the blanket off, and what is it? It's a cross. It's a cross. And the cross is, belongs there. Because as Simeon says to Mary, a sword will pierce her soul. That sword pierced her soul as she saw her son 30-some years later hanging on that cross, crucified before the world. Yes. That truly came true, what God moved Simeon to say on that day. And you and I need to see that also. And sometimes the Lord places crosses on his people too. Isaac Watts, the great hymn writer, he, have, he was an invalid when he wrote that great hymn, <coughs> Joy to the World. Yes, joy to the world. Joy to the world that the Christ child has come, that he's here with you and for me. But we see here in that temple, in the temple on that day, it isn't just Simeon. There's another important individual in this whole story, and that's Anna. And Anna, she is, the Holy Spirit also moves her that she sees that this is the, the Christ child. And so we read these. And coming up to them at that very moment, she gave thanks to God and spoke about the child to all who were looking forward to the redemption of Jerusalem. Yes. There she speaks. She, she immediately goes and starts talking to people concerning this Christ child. She'd been looking forward to this. And now she spreads a message. The Messiah has come. That's a message that we need to spread too in our world. We need to spread that also to others, a witness that the Messiah has come, that the Christ has come, that the Savior has come, so that others may believe and trust in him. 
we move people in different ways. There's a story of a, of a, a, a young boy. His mother was a social worker. And so each uh, week before Christmas each year, their garage would be filled with toys. And by Christmas time, all those toys were gone. And, there, and one year when he was nine years old, he remembers that there was a real nice airplane there in the garage. And he thought, oh, my mother, she'll surely give that to me. Well, Christmas came and she, he didn't get it. Well, that spring, his mother one day invited him to go along with her. She went out into the country and to a, to a uh, family living in a farmhouse, a husband and wife with 13 children. And as, her, as his mother is in the house consulting with the father and the mother, he's outside and, uh, with the kids there. And what does he see? He sees one of the little boys that are playing with that airplane that he wanted so desperately at Christmas himself. He'd gotten over that. Well, some years later, this man thinks back because he heard some years later that one of those, one of the sons of that family, that poor family, was now a 747 pilot. Another son was was a, was in the military uh, flight school, that he was, uh, and and so forth. And he thought maybe that toy moved them in that direction that he didn't get, but they got. You see, God works in different ways in our lives. And we need to witness him, and we need to be ones that are sharing with others in our lives too, sharing especially the gospel of Christ with others, that they may know Jesus as their Lord and as their Savior. Christ comes to you and to me, and he Christ, he Christ comes to us uh, now also. We need to hold on to him. In a Christmas service, where the children were doing the acting and so forth, and at the end of, the, uh, of the, where they had shown the Christ child and so forth, uh, they all leave. The shepherds leave and so forth. And Joseph leaves. And Mary gets up to leave. And then she remembers the baby Jesus, which is the doll in the manger. And so she goes back and grabs it by the foot and, and, and brings it to her, herself and clutches it. My friends, we need to clutch the Christ. We need to clutch him in our arms. Hold him in our arms as that one that came for you and for me, just as he came for Simeon, just as he came for Anna. He's also come for you and for me. And yes, the sword did pierce Mary's heart. The sword did pierce her heart because we know that that Lord went to a cross some 30 years later, and he was crucified therefore not for things he had done, not for his sins, for he was perfect, the perfect God, but for your sins and my sins, for all the sins of the world. That Lord there died on that cross for you and for me and then rose again from the dead as that living Lord that he is. He is always that risen living Lord that comes to you and to, to me. And so that's the Lord that we come to worship. And we need to say, for my eyes have seen your salvation, which you have prepared in the sight of all people. We can say that with Simeon. Yes, our eyes have seen his salvation. And we can also then, as Simeon, what does Simeon say? Simeon says, really, he says, I'm ready to go now, Lord. I've seen my salvation. You can take me home any time to heaven. That's really what he's saying. And so you and I, as we leave this place of worship today, and each time we come here to worship our Lord, and as we leave, we can say the nunc dimittis with and Simeon. And it goes like this. Lord, now let us thou thy servant depart in peace according to thy word. For mine eyes have seen thy salvation, which thou hast prepared before the face of all people a light to lighten the Gentiles and the glory of thy people Israel. Amen. The peace of God which passes from understanding keep your hearts and minds through faith in Christ Jesus. Amen. We now rise to make confession of our faith